What's happening, mate? Do you know? Uh, no, we've we just don't. had a big explosion. There appears to be something ahead of the train in the track. Explosion on train, yeah? Or a bang on We're the trying to get down to the system, but the smoke is really heavy. It, it could be serious. We're not too sure yet. Please listen to me very carefully. I need you to move this way. Please. We'll get ambulances to you wherever I can, OK? OK, thanks, mate. I still remember saying to myself in my mind, that's it, Sajda. July the 7th, 2005, this is it. This is the day you die. There was no really rumours coming through. We sort of got the call and then realised, didn't realise the extent of the incident until we were actually en route to the incident. There was mutterings about bombs and that sort of thing, but it, you didn't really care by that point um, because you were just dealing with what you had to deal with. Definitely walking wounded. Hedgeway Road, Russell Square, and Liverpool Street. That, that's where we think. At that point, it was a case of we just got to go down there. You, you know, we know we're thinking about secondary devices and procedures, but at that point, it was a call just to um, just drop drop everything, get down, and stop helping. Really. Time time doesn't sort of for me. The whole thing lasted about fifteen minutes. Where by the time I'd come out of the tunnel, I'd been in the station for about two, two and a half hours. There was lights on the first few carriages, and when we got to the carriage, that it was just, it was dark and black, and um, it was, yeah, devastation, really. There was, I remember it being quite slippery underfoot, which probably was a combination of bodily fluids, fuel, um, just everything, really. At some point, I've, I've frozen. Um, there's a lot going on and I've frozen, um, probably for about two seconds before I got shouted at by my colleague, and it, you sort of kick into gear. And there was a big hole on the left-hand side um, at the end of the carriage on the left, there's a hole in the floor and, and the words blast on the left-hand side. Sorry. <laughs> Morning, go yeah, on. Something's going on across London. Yeah, yeah. we know that, yeah. Um, right, can you go to, um, we, we've got a report of thick smoke in a tunnel between Liverpool Street and Allgate. What we had to do was go down and find out what this was because um, a couple of people had appeared at the time that had been on the train that managed to get out of it and um, they, um, well, basically they were covered in blood. There was a lot of wreckage and debris in that area uh, of the train, so they were having to walk over that and make sure they didn't trip. One of the bodies seemed to just uh, miraculously come alive, and uh, he's, he's got onto his feet, and I was still busy with the people that were coming past, and he walked past my, or staggered past my left shoulder. And it made me jump a little bit. And uh, he just slumped against the tunnel wall. The thing is, we couldn't save everybody that day. Um, drivers are generally not first aid trains. And even if we were, first aid training wouldn't have been any good that morning. From what I saw, I think if they'd had an operating theatre down there, it wouldn't have worked. The report of a, um, what, it's almost simultaneous to report of three explosions. Okay, hey, we need ambulances and water to yeah. King's Cross. I understand what you're saying. And Russell Square. That shouldn't have been my training to work. I should never have got onto that, but because I was late, I ended up on the very same train with the bomber. As we left King's Cross, we were literally about 10 seconds in the tunnel towards Russell Square, and that's when the massive loud bang went off. What I still remember is people pleading, the cries, get me out, help. All that time, I felt myself just close, close up, and my heart 
just get tighter and tighter. But when I heard those distant voices, it's police, we're coming to get you, is when I felt the biggest sense of relief, the biggest sense of relief I have ever, ever, ever felt because I thought there is a way out of this today. Yeah, we're on our way out. Yeah, Just bear with this because I don't. We've got something yeah. else going on. How? The sad incident of that day has been etched indelibly in my mind. The bus was packed. I couldn't move. So what I had to do, because now I was on diversion, I had to find a safe place to stop, make an announcement for my passengers to know what was happening. So I say to them, I will open the doors, and you know, it's up to you to do. So many people got alighted the bus. Many. Lucky, fortunate, and thank God for that. Uh, I wish all of them got off the bus and only me to stay there. I heard the thunder of the bomb exploding. Many things blowing, the, the, the windscreen blow away, many things happening. Thank God, nothing touched me. The first thing I did was touch my head. You know, I, I could only feel some dust. And then the first thing that came to my mind was my passengers. Talking about my ordeal, I feel a bit embarrassed if I compare it with the ordeal of my uh, passengers and fellow human beings. I don't remember the names of the bombers. I don't, I don't want to remember the names of the bombers. They don't deserve it. You never know in this job what's going to happen. Um, that might be my worst uh, call or it, it, it'd be something around the corner. I still go past Allgate. Every time I go past, there's still a little mark on the wall um, where it happens. And I always look at it every time I go past. But I don't dwell on it. I'm a great believer in that if we fall off our bikes, we have to get back on. 